Six territory, a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Salto, Blackfoot, Métis, Dene, and Dakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. Hello everyone, my name is Clara. It is my pleasure to be introducing you to this year's 2021 Nelly Talks. So, what is Nelly Talks? Nelly Talks is a virtual video series made to empower young women by having strong, independent, and impactful female speakers from all different kinds of backgrounds speak about their careers and experiences. This event is hosted by the Nellie McClung All Girls Junior High Program at Oliver School. This program, All Girls Program is a junior high that focuses on the empowerment and develop, um, the development of young women and establishing leadership skills in all those attending the school. This marks the 25th anniversary of the Nellie McClung program, and we want to celebrate that milestone with some special alumni speakers. For the past several years, Nellie students have been organizing and facilitating our annual Power of Women event, or PAP. At this large in-person event, speakers and students had the opportunity to interact in person. Unfortunately, due to the fact of the COVID-19 virus, we are unable to hold this uplifting and inspiring event in person. However, we believe this event will still be an in a motivational and an eye-opening experience for those watching. We are honored and thankful to have the opportunity to pre prepare and host this event and are proud to say this event has been primarily created by the Nellie Elma Club students. However, this would not be possible without the help from our teachers, staff, and the Nellie Elma Club Educational Society who helped make this event possible. Without further ado, we'd like to present our first speaker in our very first Nellie Talks event. Thank you. so much for inviting me to participate in this year's Power of Women event, a virtual event. I am actually a former Nelly student myself, so I'm very thrilled to be taking part. And so yeah, let's let me share a little bit about myself. I am an interior designer. I'm also a house flipper, a contractor, a project manager, sometimes TV host for HGTV and A&E. Uh, so I've worn a lot of different hats uh, in regards to making houses the very best version of themselves possible and making the people who live there feel amazing. So I can go on and on and on, but I kind of feel like this video will sum it up a little bit better. Here you go. Glass up. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Take it back to this beam right here. This is looking really nice. Woo! Feel good behind a skill saw. You look good. It's like an extension of my arm. Oh yeah, that looks so much nicer. I'm just a hawk by nature. Down a little. What over. about this way? No, no, no. A hawk. Go figure. It's perfect. Beautiful until it comes at you and Beautiful. It are Majestic. Yeah. yeah. Deadly. Magic of my building oh. skill. I've never weaved before. But we're doing it. Oh my gosh. Isn't that gorgeous? Centered with a light fixture, this could be like the medallion. Yeah, that would look great. Eesh. I do have quite a ways to go here. What if I told you buying the vacation home of your dreams could actually make you money? You're making dreams come true, Holly. People from all walks of life are investing in properties like these. Look at what? that sexy view. To own a piece of paradise. This is so beautiful and private. You guys can just leave me here. And to maximize their vacation rental potential. This is the wow factor guests are looking for. I did know that I wanted to do something related to houses. I loved blueprints. I loved imagining what the inside of different houses looked like and who lived there and what the decorating looked like. So I just assumed as I came into my college years that I would most likely want to be an architect. So it was kind of eye-opening when I took my first architecture course and I realized immediately that I do not want to be an architect. Um, as much as I love blueprints and looking at layouts, I did not find the math and knowing the code for plumbing and electrical and what the slope of the roof needs to be to hold snow weight, like all of that stuff, it just was not that thrilling for me. So I changed plans and decided that I would actually enroll in the business program. So not necessarily what I had originally envisioned for my life, but 
it made sense. So I went through my university career and at the end of that, I got my very first real world job in marketing. And I actually decided at that time I would buy my first house. So I bought a home sight unseen out of the Edmonton Journal classified ads, which I don't recommend everybody do. But for me, it worked out well. I was looking for somewhere to unleash some of my creativity. So I would work all day in an office and then I'd come home and learn how to install a, a you know, tile backsplash or install crown molding. It was a great way for me to just start learning by doing because I was a broke college, just finished college and uh, bought my first house. So obviously I don't have a lot of money. The only thing I did have was the ability to learn. So I would watch videos online or read articles and just try. And honestly, I think for a lot of people, just trying is sometimes the scary thing that holds them back from doing something really big with their life. So for me, I'm just really thankful that I went for it because in that moment, it could have been just easier to come home, cook dinner, watch my favorite show and, and call it a day. But I chose to put my energy into improving our house. And so I actually decided at some point we would you know, two years later, my husband and I were then married and we decided to sell the house and we made a little money and it kind of hit home for me in that moment that someone else is willing to pay for that work and for making something special where otherwise it was pretty plain. So at that time we bought a bigger house that needed more work and we learned how to do uh, lay hardwood floors and install cabinetry and bigger things. and it kind of gave me the confidence as we went to really realize that what I was doing was valuable and that maybe someone else would see value in that. So we started looking into the idea of purchasing older homes that no one else would be interested in buying, mainly because they either looked dated or had some sort of damage to them and then making them something really magazine worthy. And simultaneously, I actually decided to log all my ideas and my inspiration and my projects as they progressed onto my blog. And this was in 2008, so not a lot of people were blogging or vlogging back then. And I chose to use that basically as just my mental Rolodex of ideas because there actually was no Pinterest even. So it would be where I'd show pictures I'd clipped out of magazines and I'd want to log it somewhere so I don't have to have a big pile of paper laying around. So it actually was a great outlet for me to just keep my thoughts straight and you know, my family would check in and check and see what the progress looked like. And then pretty soon a few other people checked in and before you know it, I had, you know, 10,000 people a day reading and following my progress. So it was a really big, I don't know how word, I would say it was a big group of cheerleaders surrounding me going, you can do this. And so let me show you a couple of the projects, some before and afters. And so you can see what my very early work looked like. And this was when I was just designing because I really, really loved it and it was all for me. And then hopefully I was hoping someone else would see it and want to buy the houses. So here's a few pictures. I kept renovating and blogging and sharing it all and I actually ended up getting an email out of the blue from a photographer from a very popular interior design magazine and she asked if she could come and photograph my projects and put them in a magazine and as exciting as that was as flattering as that was I actually said no and I said no because I was scared that they see beautiful properties day in and day out and million dollar houses and there's no way that my work would ever compare. And as soon as I sent the thanks but no thanks email, I started to feel something deep down inside that started to feel like regret. <laughs> so I actually um, 
really questioned myself why I did that. And it was that obviously I was scared of comparison and failure. And I am just very, very grateful that six months later, they reached out again. And that time around, I decided, you know what? You're gonna do scary things. You're gonna do hard things because that's the only way to grow. And this opportunity is just so unique that you have to do it even if you're scared. So I said yes. And when the photographer showed up, I just decided I was gonna learn everything that she could share. And for a week and a half straight, I learned everything about shooting beautiful spaces so that I could then better promote my work so that I could better um, capture the spaces that I've created. And this is really important. Marketing yourself is really important. Every big brand knows that. And so in an industry where you are your brand, um, whatever that industry is, you have to learn how to best present your work and yourself. So I took that opportunity to learn, and I think I credit my Nelly time for really hammering home how important it is to learn from people and new experiences, especially when you have these rare opportunities to work with people who are great at what they do. To work with people who are amazing at what they do is such a treasure. And when you have those chances, you need to take every opportunity to learn and grow and be better. And as we've all learned in these COVID times, adapting is so important and being versatile is important. So learning how to do as much as I could on my own to build and grow my brand and my vision, I took the opportunity. So we shot the house six months later, it showed up in a magazine and two weeks later, I got an email that I was absolutely convinced was spam because it was from a TV production company that works with HGTV. And they asked if I would be willing to host a TV show about renovating or flipping. And I then realized in my life, I'm just going to be a person who says yes to stuff, even when it's scary and when it's hard. And they asked, you know, I know you're in Edmonton, but can you go to New Orleans and, and renovate these hundred year old houses that no one has lived in for, for decades or even a hundred years. And so we took a big chance. We went to New Orleans. I, I had an amazing time and again, worked with people that I just learned from day in and day out. And I'm just so proud of the work we did and the properties we transformed and how we were able to really impact people's lives and give them spaces that they were passionate about. So I then also had a great opportunity following that to work for A&E and do a few seasons of a program where we help people buy properties that they want to Airbnb, renovate them so they can make more money. And so it's been amazing to take my skill set and apply it in so many different scenarios. And I've just made it my life's mission to just whatever I do, do with 100% conviction and passion and that I will always be the person who shows up with a smile on my face and be thankful for the opportunity. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people comment back to me that that was what set me apart from maybe another candidate or another client. Um, and that it was the fact that, you know, we I'm appreciative for the opportunities and that they don't come along very often. So. I really, again, credit a lot of that to Nelly and my time there because I just learned that when you want to be the best, you have to put in the work, but that when you are the best, you work with the best and you learn and you grow and you're just always evolving, whether that's learning how to build your own website so that you can best show your your future clients what kind of work you can do, or whether that's in an industry like construction, which I do a lot of construction work in, and I'm working with primarily uh, males who aren't used to being told how to do their job or what, what the expectations are from a female. Uh, things are changing for sure, but that's still definitely something I come up against very regularly. So it's a matter of surrounding myself with people that also see the vision, are supportive, are doing good work. And in those rare instances where you get some pushback, I've learned that I know what it takes to get the job done and done well, and that I should never second guess myself. And again, I think that comes back to being a Nelly. And these are skill sets that some people are just born with, but at Nelly, it's one of the forefront things you learn as far as being empowered and being um, capable and strong because you 
are just because you are a girl. Like those things actually make me better. <laughs> and so I really thank the Nelly program for those skills and those that mindset. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, reach out anytime. I'm always happy to chat with future Nellies, past Nellies, um, and anyone interested in design, renovating, flipping houses, hosting TV shows. I mean, I feel like I've done a lot and I don't know where the next chapter will go, but I'm sure it'll be something fun and no matter what, I'll do it with a smile on my face and, and have a little fun with it. <laughs> so thank you so much, Nellie, for inviting me to chat and thank you for watching.